Hey everybody, in this video, I wanna show you three simple components that you can put together so you can keep your important appliances running during a power outage. Now, we've all seen that power outages are much more common these days, whether it's from natural disasters like hurricanes, tornadoes, or even wildfires, but are you actually prepared so if the power cuts out, you don't lose all the food in your fridge and you don't lose access to running important medical devices? So the first component of your backup system is actually a battery. Now this is a 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Chins. And there's three reasons why you'd wanna go with a lithium battery like this versus a lead acid. First off, when you charge lead acid, they release toxic fumes. So you have to have those vented outdoors, but you do not get that with lithium iron phosphate batteries. The second reason is that you get much more power or energy in this battery than you do with the same space on lead acid. This also doesn't weigh as much. The third reason is you get a lot more charge cycles, meaning you can take this from 100%, charge it all the way down to 0%, 2,000 times, and you'll still have 80% of the original capacity of the battery. So with those three reasons, I've gone with a lithium iron phosphate battery. Now the second component that you need in the backup system is actually an inverter. The inverter takes the DC power from the battery and turns it into AC power so you can plug your appliances into it. Now on the front, you have two outlets, and once you turn this on, you get a pure sine wave up to 2000 watts. That means that you can run a microwave or a fridge or even other medical devices. Now the third component for this backup system is a charger. You have to have a way to charge up this battery, especially if the power is out for a long time. So there's usually two chargers that I'll recommend. I'd recommend a solar charge controller so you can charge this off of solar panels, or an actual AC wall charger, so you can charge this off a gas generator. So with those three components, you can have a very simple backup system to run your appliances. Now wiring up a backup system like this is very simple. For example, your inverter has a main positive and negative connection, and your battery has a main positive and negative connection, and you just connect those up. So positive to positive, negative to negative, and you wanna make sure you're using the proper wire gauge and you have an inline fuse. Now this battery can put out up to 200 amps. So I have wire that can handle 200 amps and a 200 amp fuse in this box here. Now this is a little bit fancier just because I have an inline shunt here to track all the power coming out of the battery going into the inverter, but you don't need anything like this. You could just have a fuse. So now I wanna demonstrate how easy it is to use a backup system like this by running my full-size refrigerator until the battery dies. So I've charged this all the way up. So now we're gonna turn on the inverter. Now, once this is powered up, all we have to do is plug in the fridge. Now, most house fires in the United States start because people are using the wrong gauge extension cable. This is a 12 gauge wire rated for 20 amps. So make sure that you're using a very high quality extension cable you do not want to be using an 18 or 16 gauge extension cable to power your large appliances. So all we have to do is plug in the extension cable. And now that it's plugged in, we'll see how long the fridge lasts. So I've just started the test. You can see the time is at zero. It looks like this inverter uses around 10 watts of power sitting idle, which is actually pretty efficient. The battery voltage is 13.6 volts. This is going to track how many watt hours this test takes and how many amp hours. So let's let this run. I'm interested to see what we can get. Many hours later. Wow, guys, the fridge has been running off this small backup system for over 41 hours. So I'm gonna bring the camera in a little bit closer so you guys can see the results of the test. So here's a look at the inline shunt that's been tracking all the power throughout the entire test. Look at this battery voltage, 11.8 volts. This thing's about to turn off. The fridge is currently running, pulling 120 watts. And looking down here, we pulled 2.67 kilowatt hours or 2,670 watt hours or 205 amp hours. So we did pull full capacity from this battery. It's rated at 200 amp hours. And the test has been running for 41 hours and 34 minutes. So very impressive results. Now in my area, most power outages last under three hours. So with this setup, trying to run one fridge, there's no issues at all. Now, you could add additional things. I could add a secondary fridge. I could add a microwave and other appliances. Now, the best thing about a DIY setup like this is you can always expand out on different things. You could add a second battery to add a lot more runtime. You could add USB ports and 12 volt sockets to charge your mobile devices or run 12 volt gadgets. 
The options are endless. You just have to start with three main components, a battery, an inverter, and some sort of charger. Now, speaking of charging, this battery is completely empty. So I want to do a small demo of charging this up using an AC wall charger and also a solar charge controller. Now, Chins did send out this battery for me to demo to my viewers. And I thought this would be a great way to show off how you can use a large battery like this. Now, before I connected up the fridge, I did do a full charge and discharge cycle on this. I charged it up to 14.6 volts and then discharged it at a 0.2C rate all the way down until it shut off. And I was also able to get 205 amp hours. So two different tests, I was able to pull 205 amp hours versus the rated 200 amp hours. Now I will be doing a full teardown of this battery at the end of the video if you're interested in that. Now connecting this up to my system, I'm using these Anderson SB175 connections. They allow for a lot of amperage. I'm using one aught cable. And I love that I can just disconnect that from the system and set it here on the table just to make it a little easier for the video. So first off, we're gonna test this AC wall charger. It comes with two alligator clamps. Now I have this plugged into the wall. Super easy to use. Plug it into the wall or your AC generator, and then you take your actual alligator clamps that come with this, and you just plug it into the battery, and it will kick on. Now, if I have my clamp meter here, I'm gonna zero it out, and I'm gonna set it to the actual amps here, and it is actually charging at 20 amps. So we are able to charge the battery at a full 20 amps, which is pretty great for uh, just a, one of these you know, kind of affordable AC wall chargers. Now, charging at 20 amps, it's gonna take 10 hours to charge this battery if it's completely empty. So uh, that's your easiest way, alligator clamps right to the battery. Now, some people that are not lithium iron phosphate uh, purists will just say, hey, use a battery charger. And I'll tell you, I've been able to use a lead acid battery charger without any issues at all. This is a really nice one that I like to recommend. This is the ProLogix 20 amp charger. This has a 20 amp, a 10 amp, and a two amp setting. And if you set it to AGM, um, the voltage is very similar compared to an actual lithium iron phosphate battery. And all these batteries have a built-in battery management system or a BMS. So you can't really ever overcharge them or over discharge them. So, you know, this is not gonna damage it. It might not top it off fully, but it gets it really close. Like you probably get to like 98, 99% uh, state of charge. So all you do is plug this charger in and then connect it to the positive and negative. And this also charges at 20 amps. The benefit to this is you can use this on, uh, you know, your car battery and stuff. So multi-purpose, this allows for six volt and 12 volt charging for batteries. So if you already have a 12 volt battery charger, you know, I don't see a problem with using it on these, but some of the lithium iron phosphate purists might disagree with that. And then if you wanna charge really fast, you can purchase one of these. This is a very expensive charger. This is an Ames power converter. This is built for 12 volt or 24 volt batteries. And using the dip switches, you can tell it which uh, specific battery chemistry that you're using. So you do have a lithium iron phosphate setting and this will charge at, I believe up to 75 amps. Lots of different AC chargers. Uh, if I'm charging fast, I'll use this Ames power converter. And if I'm charging a little bit slower, I'll use these two options. Hopefully that gives you guys just a little bit of background on some of the AC chargers that you can use on a battery like this. Now my preferred way to charge up a battery like this is by using solar panels with a solar charge controller. Now a charge controller allows you to take the power from your solar panels and converts it down to a charging voltage on your battery. Now there are two main types of charge controllers. You have a PWM controller or a pulse width modulation, and you also have an MPPT solar charge controller or a maximum power point tracking charge controller. Now here on the table, I have MPPT versions because those are more efficient. They usually have a little bit more features as well. And I'll just break down a few different models here. Now before that, it's very easy to connect your charge controller to your battery. You have your two main wires from your solar panels that come into the charge controller, and then two main wires that go out to your battery. Both are positive and negative, so it's really easy to set it up. Now you just wanna make sure you're using the proper wire gauge and that you have some sort of fuse or DC disconnect on your PV input. Now here on the table, I have this smaller version. This is a 300 watt PowerWorks MPPT solar charge controller. This one's really cool because it's fairly affordable and allows you to charge your battery at 300 watts. So if you want a really small setup, this will do really well. Now moving on to some larger options. 
This one here from Power Queen is a 12 to 24 volt uh, charge controller. So this will charge 12 volts or 24 volt batteries. And this one accepts up to 100 volts input via solar panels and will charge at 30 amps. One of my favorite charge controllers that I've used a lot in the past is this Ep Ever. This is a 40 amp charge controller. It has a really nice display. This one accepts up to 150 volts VOC from your solar panels. And this one does 12 volt all the way up to 48 volt batteries. Now the last charge controller that I've kind of been testing out a bit lately is this Bouge RV 40 amp charge controller. This one also accepts up to 150 volts open circuit with your solar panels. This one also does 12 volts all the way up to 48 volts. But this one's cool because it has an actual Bluetooth connectivity for a smartphone app. So you can change the settings and monitor everything that's happening via your smartphone. So lots of different options. If you're gonna pick out a charge controller, I'd recommend sticking with an MPPT because they're more efficient. And then just choose the size that works best for your battery setup. A big battery like this, if you wanna charge it quickly, you're gonna need a lot of solar panels. Now the main purpose of this video is to show you how simple it is to put together a DIY backup system like this to run your important appliances. Now of course you could go bigger or you could go smaller. A DIY setup is just completely customizable and that's what's really cool about them. Now if you are interested in building something like this, I'll have all the parts down in the video description so you guys can check that out. Now, I've been very impressed with the performance on the Chin's 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. I will be doing a full teardown of that here in a minute. What did you guys think of this type of setup? Do you guys use a power station? Do you use a gas generator? Do you use something like this? Throw a comment down below and let me know what type of system you use to keep your appliances running if the power goes out. Also, please smash the thumbs up button if you like this type of content. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the teardown. I'll see you guys in the next video. Now, I never advise my viewers to tear down their batteries. Obviously, it's gonna void the warranty. So I've gone ahead and removed the lid. They kind of just pop off. And uh, this is glued in here pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrestle this for a while, see if I can get this out. Then we can check out the BMS and how the cells are configured and to see if this has low temperature charging protection. Now, I've been trying to get this thing out for about 30 minutes. I cannot get this loose. They have a ton of glue along the bottom of the battery that is holding this in here. And that's fine. I don't wanna completely destroy this because I like to use them after. I just wanted to take the lid off and see how it's set up. Now, I think we can still get in here. Um, I've removed this heat shrink that goes around the entire battery and I've cut this fiberboard loose. So now we can take a look at the inside. Now your main conductor, you have three eight gauge wires that are wired together in parallel. They do have heat shrink and a really good crimped connection. Now this is silicone wire rated at 200 C and it has this nice protector on it. Now in line of your negative wire, you have your BMS or battery management system. This controls the charging and discharging of the battery. Now your main positive conductors, you have two six gauge wires. This is also silicone wire rated at 200 C. Very nice crimped connection with heat shrink as well. Now for the actual batteries inside, you have eight 100 amp hour cells. This is a 4S 2P configuration. So you have 200 amp hour cells wired together in parallel, and then you have four of those put together in series to make a 12 volt, 200 amp hour battery. Now for the actual bus bars, these are nice aluminum bus bars. Everything looks to be tightened down very nicely. Uh, all the balance leads are tightened down and it has this nice track that keeps all the wires in there that's glued down. Now for the BMS, I did find this high temperature sensor that I peeled up. This is just a switch for high temperature. This does not have low temperature charging protection, but it's not advertised to have it, so that's fine. Overall, a really good build quality. These are new 100 amp hour cells. The QR codes are on them and they do say they're 100 amp hours, and we were able to pull full capacity from this battery. So overall, really good build quality. Let me go ahead and put everything back together.